Welcome, everybody, and thank you for attending the IDEX Solution Lunchtime webinar series. I'm Susan Crowden, and I'm a PLM account executive here at IDEX Solutions. I've had about 20 years' experience selling a, ver a variety of different types of PLM solutions. In the last six years, I've been concentrating primarily on the Dassault family of products. We have a couple of housekeeping issues we'd like to go over. First of all, please mute your phone by pressing star six. And if you want to unmute your phone, press pound six. <clears throat> I also want to let you know that the summer webinar series is now a 12-part series. And if you attend four or more sessions, you'll be entered to win an iPod Touch 32 gigabyte. Uh, the presentation will be approximately 45 minutes, followed by 15 minutes of questions and answers. Next slide. A little bit about IDEX Solutions. IDEX Solutions is a full-service engineering services corporation started in 1996 around the Dassault Systems products. We sell such products as Catia, Anovia, 3D Via Composer, and Delmia. Uh, we do implementation services, customizations and process development. We do an awful lot of training here in our facilities in Portland. We have three locations, Portland, Seattle, and Los Angeles. We also do um, on-site engineering staffing as well as process consulting. A little bit of information about our presenter today. Our presenter today is Greg Albrechtson from Dassault Systems. Greg joined Dassault in 2003 after working nine years as a senior analyst and design engineer. Throughout his career, he's had the opportunity to design and analyze a variety of different types of things like medical implants, sports equipment, consumer products, and aerospace structures. During his first years with Dassault, he focused on providing technical management for the CAA Partner and Adopter Program. However, over the last few years, his focus has been on the CATIA Analysis Solutions. So with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Greg Albrechtson. Greg? Greg, are you out there? Hello? Greg? Yes? Are you out there? I am. Sorry, we must have had some little technical difficulty. We couldn't hear you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay. We were ready to ask if anybody else wanted to present. <laughs> uh, maybe did you mute everybody perhaps I got muted in the process of that who knows um, okay so anyway uh, I'll, I'll reintroduce myself again <laughs> I'm Greg Albertson and I work for the uh, Samulia brand of products with inside of Dassault systems and Samulia is responsible for basically all analysis and simulation products with inside the, the ecosystem and that includes everything from CATIA analysis through to uh, the Abacus products there as well. Um, so as Susan mentioned, this is the second part of a two-part series. The first part, perhaps, uh, which some of you may have already attended, was the nonlinear, the new nonlinear capabilities, which we have inside of CATIA analysis. And this one is for the thermal analysis capabilities, which we have in there as well. So with that, I'm going to progress through the slides here. Uh, this is the, an overview of the agenda, what I'm going to go through today. I'm going to give a, a brief background on what's currently available it, with inside CATI analysis right now. Uh, some of you may be aware of this. Some of you may not be aware of some of the different capabilities we have. Uh, and then primarily I'm going to focus in on the ATH, the Thermal Analysis Workbench, give you a little bit of a demo um, and discuss some different industry use cases where you can apply this to your everyday products and um, design situation. So with inside of our portfolio, um, you know, we do cover 11 different major industries. And, you know, really we can relate to each one of these industries and we can answer the questions that, that come forward from these four simulation strategies. So whether we're looking at a full vehicle of, a, of an aircraft or an automobile, you know, we, we can do everything from, you know, simple linear statics analysis of a metal bracket through the the crushing or delamination of fibers or 
you know, maybe we're looking at a high-tech market and perhaps we want to do some thermal type analyses as well for a laptop or something. So we really do have a solution that does focus and does, you know, answer all of the, the problems that you're going to encounter within your particular industry. So with inside the, the brand, Deso Systems is made up of uh, six major brands, and this is just kind of a representation of that. And again, uh, Samoa is the brand that we're speaking of here primarily, uh, and that's for, you know, virtual testing of your, your product, basically building and designing and analyzing your product before you have to build any prototypes and, and hopefully before you see any field failures and have to start pulling things, you know, out of the field, which can be very costly. So a little bit of a background on Samulia, who we are and what we cover. Uh, we do have a scalable product strategy. So I, I kind of briefly mentioned this on the previous slides. Um, you know, we do have everything that ranges from simple CATIA analysis all the way through to, you know, the, the most complex multi-physics analysis you could ever think of. Uh, the image in the top right-hand corner would be an analysis that we did for a tire manufacturer, and they wanted to evaluate tread design versus a hydroplaning issue. So we really can accomplish, you know, whatever type of analyses that you're looking at. Uh, we're, we're very focused on technology and R&D. Um, our headquarters for the Samulia brand is in Providence, Rhode Island, and you know the majority of people who work for Samulia have advanced degrees. So there's a lot of knowledgeable people there, uh, building a lot of a lot of interest and a lot of technology into our products, trying to make the, the best in class solutions available on the market. So what is realistic simulation? Uh, people define this differently, uh, but you know. Realistic simulation is, to us is the use of finite elements and multi-physics to, to learn and predict how your product is going to react in the real world. So as we release these new products today, like the, the thermal analysis workbench, we've had a lot of interest and um, requests to, to include thermal analysis in our workbench, and we've answered that for you to be able to go ahead and, you know, evaluate your design alternatives a little bit better, accelerate your design decisions, and, and really, you know, increase your, your confidence and your performance of your products, getting them to be able to simulate very easily, but also simulate the complex problems that you see in the, in the real world today. So with inside of our portfolio, uh, this kind of shows the, the different products we have currently in, in the portfolio. Uh, for the most part, I believe everybody's familiar with the CATIA analysis products. You know, this is the, the products that are based on the Elfini technology that everybody sees today in CATIA analysis. Uh, most people on this call probably also know what the Abacus product is as well. So we do still support both of these. Um, you know, a few years back, we also took some of this Abacus technology and, you know, we integrated that inside of the CATIA workbench. And so there is an Abacus for CATIA product out there as well. Um, so what this chart represents is the designer knowledge level and the technology sophistication level. So if you have a very sophisticated analysis that you're going to do, that's probably going to require somebody with a, a great level of knowledge and a, a, a high depth of sophistication. So that's going to put it over here in, in perhaps the Abacus product. Well, what we've done now with the release of R19 SP3 is we've expanded the, the capability inside of our CATIA analysis portfolio to then leverage and take advantage of our Abacus technology and go ahead and embed that inside of the CATIA analysis portfolio for basic nonlinear and thermal simulations. So now you have the, the power and the knowledge of a lot of the, the Abacus know-how and you know the, the Abacus programming to, to go in there and solve your, your nonlinear and your thermal simulations with great accuracy and, and, and high level of reliability there as well. And that's what I'm going to focus on um, today is this thermal simulation component. So with inside the portfolio, um, you now have available to you uh, these major products. Uh, the two new products, ATH and ANL, does extend the capability of your GPS and GAS. It's not there to replace those. It's there to extend those capabilities. So previously when you weren't able to do a thermal or a nonlinear analysis with the standard GPS or GAS, now you have that capability um, to be able to do that right inside of your CATIA workbench. So just to give a, a brief background, a brief overview on the you know, CATIA analysis itself, you know, 
we're talking about the, the same interface as the design environment, so we're not introducing any new uh, design interfaces. It's all built on the same um, geometry structure and all of that, so whatever knowledge and information you put into your design, you're going to be able to reuse that on the analysis side of things. You can modify parameters, you can update parameters, you can use knowledgeware to drive these parameters, and this all reflects and works on the, on the analysis workbench there as well. Um, things people don't realize, you know, we have a very robust uh, modeling system, whether you want to look at solids, shells, wireframes, if you're constructing a, a complex analysis of hybrid assemblies, we have that capability as well. Uh, we also have the concept of assembly analyses. What this allows you to do is have several designers or several engineers working in a more concurrent environment, building up their meshes independently, and then joining those together in the assembly of analysis technique as well. Um, and then we also have you know, quite a variety of realistic connections there. We have uh, automatic bolted connections, contact connections, uh, specific weld connections for spot weld, seam weld, um, adhesive joints, and, and different things like that as well. Other things people don't typically recognize or realize um, in the functions and capabilities of the CATIA analysis portfolio is because it's built right there inside of CATIA as well. You can go ahead and leverage more of your Knowledgeware products like PEO if you need to do some sort of optimization on minimizing your mass or stiffness or you want to drive it towards some sort of stress or displacement requirement. Um, you can utilize the PEO product to, to go ahead and put those particular parameters in there to have you know, your design driven a little bit more optimized. You can set up a template workflow as well. So if you do a lot of design iterations on, on a few components in your assembly, um, you can do a, a template-based approach. So this here is like a little Bluetooth switch. So this is an assembly. And using a template approach, uh, you can go through and use something like publications and assembly or part. And then what you're able to do with that is build your analysis connections related to your publications. What that then allows you to do is just simply go in and replace your components to do different design variations. And it eliminates the need to go in and recreate all your connections. So you can build very smart templates to just go through you know, a multitude of different design variations there as well. Okay, that's all the overview of the, the standard CATIA analysis that I'm going to go over today. Um, so for thermal analysis, um, again, this is launched in our new uh, extended analysis workbench. So this is really directed and geared towards designers and design engineers. Now it is capable and it is the depth of it is possible to go in and have a, a specialist use this as well. It's that sophisticated. But again, it's designed for designers and design engineers in the sense that the, the user interface and the level of interaction that's needed for it is very easy to use. And you'll, you'll be able to see that in some of the demos coming up here. So the capabilities, again, that we've incorporated into this would be uh, including thermal effects and including nonlinear materials, whether that nonlinear material is uh, you know, a plastic curve or has any sort of temperature dependence on that as well. So uh, just to point out here, um, again, this new technology is not based on the Elfini technology. It is based on the Abacus technology. So you're getting best-in-class uh, nonlinear solver technology and thermal solver technology there as well. And this works for parts or assemblies. So you know whatever you're modeling in your current environment, whatever products you have, whether they're solid parts, shell parts, beam parts, um, you know we can uh, take those in effect as well. So ATH, um, ATH calculates the temperature distribution in a part or an assembly. What the capabilities for this allow you to do is you can incorporate a steady state or a transient analysis. So if your analysis is going to be time dependent or you want to run that out to time infinity or a steady state, uh, you know you just toggle that particular switch that you want to do that for and you can calculate that analysis. Uh, as I previously mentioned, the material properties can be temperature dependent, whether that's a a stiffness material property or, or um, anything else there, you can do that as well. The types of loading that you have would be a, a heat flux, um, adjacent fluid, specified temperature, 
So you can basically load this up however you would for any sort of uh, you know standard thermal analysis, heat transfer um, type situation. Heat conduction within an assembly and across an assembly. What this allows you to do is you can specify uh, gap conductance between different components of your assembly. So the heat transfer and information can flow from one part through a um, some sort of gap that you've specified into another part or, or what have you. So you can get a, a full realistic effect for this. So analysis procedures, um, steady state and transient, just a, maybe a, a little bit of review here. Um, so steady state and transient, uh, what are the differences here? Well, the difference that we have is when you apply a temperature to some particular part, if you apply this temperature differential, um, after some short time, you know, the temperature on one side is and through the part is going to have the, you know, the particular temperature distribution depending on what time you have. And that temperature distribution can change with the relationship of, of the thickness. So as you go through and you increment this and you go through the solve time, you know, if you keep going, eventually you're going to reach some sort of steady state temperature um, within inside of your component and part, and you can extract this information for any steady state or any transient type analysis. So the transient analysis, you're going to get those temperature effects that are, you know, uh, respective with the particular time that you're running the situation. And steady state is a little more time independent. It's just going to run it to a steady state until you have, you know, that constant temperature distribution through your part. So we have the capability now to be able to do either of these types of analyses with the thermal analysis workbench. So property tables, um, thermal material properties. Here's an example. Uh, so basically, uh, with the addition of, of this product, when you open up your material property form, you're going to see a new tab in there. It's going to have the nonlinear and thermal property form in there. And with this form, you're going to go through and just you know give a little bit more detail instead of just your standard modulus and Poisson ratio. You have some other options in here to define a little bit more detail what uh, type of material characteristics you need to put in there. So if your part's a, a, a plastic part and exhibits plasticity, you can toggle that. Uh, thermal conductivity, you can toggle that. And you, as you can see here in this form, you know we have all this uh, specific heat at different temperatures and, and so forth. So you can get a, a really detailed representation of your material. Thermal loads. Um, so again, what types of loads can we put in here? We could put a heating or a heat flux. Uh, so if you have some sort of heat generation or heat flux, you can put that in there. Uh, or adjacent fluid um, for thermal film conditions. So if you have some sort of uh, fluid flow across the surface, you know we can incorporate that type of effect. It's not going to um, model the flow of the fluid, but if you know what the adjacent or thermal film condition happens to be, then you can just put that on there and you know do your heat transfer analysis with that. If you have particular specified temperature points for that as well, um, we can incorporate that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, switch gears here for just a second, and I'm going to show a little bit of, a, of an AVI. Uh, so what I have here is I'm going to go through a, the setup of uh, a thermal analysis, and what we have is a rice cooker. So this is a thermal conductive analysis of, of a rice cooker. So as I play this, um, you can see it's right here inside the standard CATIA analysis workbench. Uh, whatever material properties you have defined, you know you can incorporate these. Uh, this in particular happens to be a uh, still out of the standard steel catalog. I've gone in and put in you know the varying temperature dependent thermal expansion coefficients and all those that are going to relate to the particular thermal analysis. To enter the thermal analysis workbench, it's the same way you enter anything else inside of CATIA. Just go up to the pull-down menu, switch over, and once you switch over, then you'll notice that your thermal case and everything is automatically created for you. Once that's created for you, you can go about putting on your loads, boundary conditions, doing your meshes. So again, this is all based on the, the GPS technology as well, so you have all that capability uh, to apply a temperature or to create the, the first heat transfer, uh, you're going to define the initial temperature state. 
Once you define the initialization or initial temperature state, you can then come in and put the resultant temperature states that it's going to go through. Um, if you have a surface that has a constant applied temperature, you can go in and select that, apply that constant temperature distribution, and then go about walking around the, the rest of your model, applying the, the different temperature restraints or boundary conditions that you have. So in this instance, we're going to put a film condition across the surfaces here. And you'll notice as the, the film condition is put on here, we go ahead and put in a coefficient for that. And then a reference temperature for where that coefficient is you know, uh, applicable. And it's just as easy as putting any, any sort of other boundary condition you know, that you would have from a linear statics approach or, or what have you. Uh, you can specify a different film condition or coefficient for the film condition on different parts of the model. Uh, so if it exhibits you know, different boundary conditions, you can go ahead and model for that. It doesn't have to be all the same across the entire model. And now you can also apply the gap conductance. What this allows you to do, because this is an assembly, perhaps you need to model with a little bit of detail, how does that heat transfer go from one part to the next? So you can get to this particular level of detail of the gap conductance. So you can go through, model that, put those parameters in there. And you can also specify a, a value relating to the distance between the gap conductance there as well. The next step, um, I'm going to back up here on this just a little bit. This form here is, is a very, very unique and very neat form. Uh, because we have an assembly, we need to set up some sort of interaction between these two particular components. And this works both on the thermal workbench and the nonlinear workbench as well. We have an automatic interaction contact wizard. So what this does is basically just launching the toolbar. It allows you to come in here and say, hey, look, and find all my new interactions. I can have it searched by a particular uh, gap tolerance. I can have it search the entire model. I can select particular components that I want it to include. So what this is going to do is this is going to go out and search my entire model and create those contact or those fastened connections where it finds those surfaces within some you know, search criteria that you specified on the previous form. You go ahead and run that. As that runs, it goes through and it creates all those, those uh, connections and so forth, and then you're, you're notified in the bottom right-hand corner how many of those connections it actually finds. Then when it is complete and has searched your entire model, you get a report back of all those particular connections. So you can go through um, and, and include these connections, delete these connections, whatever you want to do. Um, but for this instance, we're going to go ahead and just create them and, and keep them. You can highlight them one at a time. When you do highlight them in the form, it highlights them on the screen for you so you can actually see what it's relating to, give you a little bit of uh, more real-time feedback on that. And then go ahead and accept those. So you can see what those have done is that's just created your standard general analysis constraints that we're familiar with from the, the GAS workbench. So once it's created those general analysis connections, we can see that it automatically created our gap connections or our contact connections here as well. So all that's taken for taken care of uh, for you in the interaction wizard. There's our boundary condition for our applied temperature. Create our job, put a few different uh, items in the job perhaps. Maybe you want to specify a, a particular memory allocation that you have uh, on your model. Increase that to, to meet the solver run in memory. And then once you're done with that, you just basically send it off to the solver. You get real-time feedback during the solve. So as it's solving, it gives you feedback where it is through the step and how close it is to converging through the step. So you can get some real-time feedback for that and, and have a better idea of when your solution is going to be done. Once the solution is completed, we attach the results. So it's slightly different than how you look at the results um, in the GPS workbench. But we go ahead and we attach the results, generate the nodal temperatures, and then we can look at the temperature distribution within our part due to all those thermal loads that we put in there. So it's pretty easy and pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to switch back to uh, 
to the presentation to the PowerPoint here again. Okay, so uh, what I just reviewed basically in that little AVI as I went through and also discussed and, and displayed how we do the, the gap conduction properties and then the automatic contact detection there as well. And again, those work on both workbenches, whether it's the thermal workbench or the, the nonlinear stress workbench as well. So once we have created these temperatures, if that's all you're interested in is the temperatures, that's fine. And you can go about and you know give your write your reports, create your automatic reports, however you do that currently today. Uh, also, what a lot of people are interested in is the stresses in their products due to those thermal loadings as well. So based on the temperatures that are calculated from ATH, we can automatically take these temperatures and bring those into uh, either the GPS linear workbench or the, the nonlinear workbench here for ANL, and you can calculate your thermal stresses due to those temperature distributions there as well. And then you can go about that, reusing any of those contacts that you've already created and performed on the ATH workbench. So a couple examples here, um, combining ATH and thermal analyses. Uh, you, know, you can go through and look at you know, bolt tensions or bolt stresses due to these as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we, we can look at that. Switch back to the AVI. So now the uh, thermal loading or the thermal distribution has been accompanied for, we can go ahead, as I mentioned, and take these into account for a, a stress analysis. So this is a little bit of a review um, now for the nonlinear workbench. So if you attended the last webinar, a lot of this would probably be familiar to you, but if not, um, then this is going to be new and some, some good information for you. So basically here, uh, with inside the nonlinear workbench, we again apply the, the initial temperature distribution uh, or the initial temperature state. Once you've defined the initial temperature state, you can come through to find whatever sort of fasten pairs or fasten connections you want to create between the components or the parts. And then ultimately, we can incorporate those new thermal loads uh, that were created from the, the thermal analysis workbench. So to incorporate those loads, basically just launch, launch the thermal distribution. And now here on this particular form, we reference our previous thermal load case. So we're referencing our thermal load case one for this. And then we can go through and start to incorporate those thermal distributions for the stress analysis. Once that's been imported, you can go ahead and look at that temperature history, verify that it's all in there, um, put on any of your other sort of uh, restraints for this model, so clamp the bottom in this particular instance. And then again, in a very similar way, we can go ahead and create a new job, give it a name so that we know what we're talking about here, adjust any memory parameters that you need to to create the solve. And then ultimately, once this is completed, it's the same way we go ahead and send this information off to the solver as well. Now we can see both of our jobs in there, submit this to the solver, same kind of feedback. come in and now we can view any of the results, our stress or our translational displacement, whatever we're interested in. And now we have our thermal displacement due to the temperature loading. Okay. So that kind of sums up um, what we're talking about for the thermal analysis workbench. Uh, again, these, these two new products, ATH and ANL, are both released and launched in the, the R19 SP3 pack, um, and they, they incorporate all the current CATIA analysis products and extend those particular capabilities. So whatever you're trying to look at to solve, to your examples here, we can definitely now solve a lot of other type of aspects. Now we also still realize perhaps there's there's some more capabilities that maybe you want to get to, um, and that's where we still have the advocates for a CATIA workbench. Maybe you need to look at a drop test or impact analysis, uh, post-buckling, fracture, failure analysis. So 
So we still have you know, our advanced capabilities for Abacus or the embedded Abacus for CATIA products that go ahead and you know, do a little bit more advanced analyses when you really need to go to that next level. So we still have those capabilities there as well. We also realize um, you know, we don't have the particular solution with inside of our direct portfolio to answer all of your solution needs, and that's why we've put together our partnership program. Uh, as mentioned at the start of this call, I, I did originally work with some of the partnership programs, so uh, luckily enough, I know a lot of these companies very well. You know, we have joint ventures or operations with a lot of the CFD, the common CFD applications out there, CD Adapco, uh, Fluent, Flomerix, and you know, we have gone ahead and worked with these companies to help them embed their solutions inside of our current CATIA analysis environment as well. So we do have some embedded um, direct interfaces with some of those products. So you know, if you're looking through our portfolio and we don't answer the exact analysis need that you're looking at, um, you know, be sure to, to give us a call and there's probably a good chance that we already have a partnership with one of these companies that has built an interface inside of CATIA. So just to kind of wrap things up here, um, go through a few particular industry cases. Uh, I just kind of pinpointed a few here for automotive. So, you know, the benefits of doing this uh, for you folks that are in the automotive, uh, you know, we can now take account for hyperelastic or any type of nonlinear material behavior. You know, obviously the temperature dependence, we've gone through this today, the thermal loading, pre-stress states, multi-step loading. So with these two new products, it's not just a uh, linear quasi-static loading, you can go through and actually do a, a real-world multi-step loading process. So you can you know, load your model the way it gets loaded in, in real life, and you can even go through a loading process and remove that loading during the simulation and look at your post or, or pre-stress states for those loading conditions as well. High-tech, um, you know, a lot of great thermal loading capabilities in, in high-tech, you know, so if you're looking at heat sinks and you know, heat generation devices and all sorts of things like this. You know, we can now model those, put those heat distributions within your assembly or your parts, and then look at the, you know, how that weakens your part or makes your part deflect. Energy industry, uh, you know, energy industry is really big on both steady state and transient analysis. So being able to look at your temperature distribution or your stress state at any particular point from a, a thermal loading is, is, you know, very valuable. So we can answer those types of conditions now as well. Um, whatever type of material you have, uh, metal plasticity, and again, back to uh, plastics and rubber hyperelasticity, um, you know, we can account for those now as well. So with that, um, that pretty much sums everything up for the ATH uh, thermal analysis workbench. So it's a pretty easy product to use, and you can obviously see there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of great capabilities in that workbench. So uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Susan. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for a really great presentation. Um, I want to go over a couple of things. Uh, I want to remind you about next week's session, which is the second half of uh, CATIA V5NC programming. It's going to be uh, presenter Wes Russell, and Wes is a great presenter as well. Um, I want to remind you that if you attend four or more sessions, you are entered into a drawing for the iPod Touch. And if anybody's on the line has any questions for Greg, now would be a great time to ask him. I'm going to open the floor for questions. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm asking that. Right now. Are you typing a question? So you can either uh, ask a question verbally or you can send them through and type them to me. It did. Okay, so a question has come through about how much is the ATH license. Uh, I'm going to refer this because I'm a technical guy. Uh, I, I try not to keep track of, uh, of costs. Um, I'm going to refer this over to, to the folks at IDEX. Um, answer that one if you have that information. 
Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'm not exactly positive. I think it's $12,000 on top of the uh, GAS or GPS configuration. Uh, it works if you guys are, are working in the PLM Express situation, it, it works with those bundling as, as well. So it doesn't have to be just a straight up GPS, GAS license. It works for all those as well. So if you're using GAE or FAX or something like that, you can go ahead and incorporate either of these into you know your portfolio as well. So that works there. And who is okay, who is it that's asking the question? So I can get back to you with some information. I've got it there on the on the chat. So Okay. Any other questions? Uh, here's here's the question that came through to me. Um, th this question here is: Is it only available in R19? That is correct. Uh, it is available at R19 SP3 or later. Um, one of the other questions that came through to me is. Uh, they mentioned that EST is also capable of doing uh, thermal stress analysis. That is correct. Um, the major difference that we have here is with EST, you have to import a temperature distribution. So if you know what your temperature distribution is, you know, the temperature at a particular location, you can incorporate that into EST and you can do a thermal stress analysis from there. Now realize that the GPS and EST products are for linear analysis. Um, so this, you know, allows you, the ATH workbench allows you to determine what that temperature distribution is, and then you can use that temperature distribution to calculate your linear or your nonlinear stresses. Does this work for composite parts? Yes, this works for composite parts as well. So it doesn't really matter what type of part you put in here, uh, any type of part or assembly, shell, solid elements, whatever you have, as long as you have the material properties and material characteristics, um, this works for those as well. Okay. All right, if there aren't any more questions, we'll end the webinar. Thank you, Greg, again for the presentation. It was wonderful. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.